Welcome to COVID-19 PPE forecasting, the University of Florida Health's application of the SG2 surge demand calculator to supply chain. Today we welcome University of Florida Health speakers, Don Watkins, Director of Strategic Sourcing, and Abby Andring, Manager of Integrated Service Center Operations. We'd also like to welcome SG2 speakers, Madeline McDowell, Principal and Medical Director, and Megan Robb, Vice President, Product Management. Thank you all for joining us today. I'd like to turn the program over to Don Watkins. Don? Thank you for that warm welcome. This is Don Watkins, and it's an honor to share our recent journey with fellow ARM members. Like many of you, we have been tasked with preparing sufficient PPE and other COVID-19 related supplies. We began modeling these needs with the HHS Hospital PPE Planning Tool. Realizing that the HHS model did not incorporate several variables, such as geographic specific information and social distancing, we continued to seek other sources of data to forecast our needs. Abby Andring will now describe the next steps of our journey. Thank you, Don. So Vizient, our group purchasing organization, shared the SG2 surge demand calculator, which outputs the average daily census, and that's based on variables that are directly influenced by COVID-19. Using this model, our chief information officer provided me with a final model that includes input specific to US Health Shands Hospital. As a supply chain leader, I quickly realized that this data served as a viable resource for determining PPE projections beyond its original prescribed capacity. I'm going to turn this over to the SG2 designers to explain more about the model specifically. Afterwards, I'll follow up with a review of our attached resources for supply chain applications, which includes a plug and chug Excel document that can serve as a tool for your own organization. I'm now going to pass it over to Maddie to tell you more about the SG2 model. Great, thank you, Abby. Abby's team used this model to help input what the demand would be in terms of inpatients in their hospital during surge for COVID-19 to better estimate what the downstream demand would be for PPE and workforce needs. So the way that our uh, surge demand calculator works is it's an infectious disease modeling tool that looks specifically at the properties of COVID-19 using an SIR infectious disease model to better understand what the infection rates will be in your market, and then it applies age-adjusted hospitalization rates to your market. So what you come out with in the output is the total number of non-ICU and ICU beds and ventilators needed during surge for COVID-19. Meg, anything else to add? No, that's exactly what the model outputs, Maddie. And I think in terms of the plug and chug tool that Abby and Don had created, it, it really provides the basis for modeling against those ICU, non-ICU, and ventilator resources that are so uh, necessary to understand in a surge planning perspective when you're thinking about COVID response. One thing to add, that I just um, think is very important is the model also incorporates the timing and impact of social distancing measures in your market. Using the specific beta in the SIR model, we are able to calculate what the blunting of the curve would look like in terms of hospital bed demand based on the social distancing measures and when they were started. And this is a model that's provided for all of the users on this call. And so as we turn things back over to Abby to use this input, the demand input, as the starting point for PPE forecasting, know that you'll too have the, uh, the chance to play with the model and use it for your local market forecasting needs. Abby? Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies, for providing that really helpful background and insight. So now that we've heard that background, I can dive into how we use the more specific supply chain applications within the revised model that includes a modified version of that HHS model and incorporates the SG2 average daily census outputs. So let's take a look at that model now. The first resource you will use is the modified HHS model using the SG2 outputs. On the first tab, which is the SG2 outputs, 
your first action is to copy and paste the SG2 average daily census outputs direct from the SG2 demand calculator. And note that this is in weeks, as the calculator does also um, output days as well. By inserting this information in, the entire data will be populated across the workbook. So the inputs tab is your second tab on the bottom, which works the same way. However, this is where clinical support from leaders in your organization will prove very beneficial. The ratios per patient input may need to be modified based on individual hospital labor needs. And then PPE assumptions requires inputs for estimated PPE per roles per shift. So essentially, you're looking at how much armor you're giving each role in a given shift. So for example, in a 12-hour shift, this is the amount of PPE that will be consumed based on the role. And note that numbers less than one can be utilized to account for reuse. So for example, a 0.5 N95 indicates that a single mask can be used for two shifts. And then while both of those scenarios look the same, as Meg and Maddie were referring to the with or without social distancing, we're going to talk specifically about only one of those scenarios, even though the outputs will look the same. So moving along to your next tab, this is with social distancing. And again, the without will look the exact same, so I advise you to follow the same steps there. So this tab takes the SG2 daily census and multiplies out by total patient days. So and then again, the information from section two is already pre-populated based on those inputs that you just provided. Section three calculates the staff we are armoring with PPE in relation to the patients in the hospital. So this is broken out into the different classifications of patients, non-ICU, ICU, and vented patients. Section four was also already pre-populated and will naturally slide over and get populated. So this is at the bottom of those scenarios tab, and this is the data that you're really gonna wanna focus on. So section five auto-calculates the daily demand for each type of PPE, so how much consumption would be in a single day. And then section six takes into account the total length of the pandemic as calculated by the SG2 model. And so it's calculating all of the PPE demands for the entire length of the pandemic. Both the scenario one and scenario two, so with or without social distancing, are rolled up into this final summary tab. Again, no action here is needed, but it shows you the range of PPE needed based on those two different scenarios. And then it's up to you and your organization to decide where within that realm your, your goal is to meet PPE demand. So while this model outputs total demand, we further built out the model to focus on forecasting. So I can now direct your attention to the attachment focusing on PPE forecasting. So while this model is specific to isolation gowns, you can apply the same model to any PPE that was outputted in that model that we just reviewed. There are multiple data sources that you will need to enter to make this forecasting report. So in terms of data sources, we use information provided by Owens & Minor, which is our distribution partner, to determine available order quantities, quantities allocated to the Gainesville campus of UF Health, and quantities allocated to the Jacksonville campus, as we are sister hospitals and we share a distribution space. So additionally, we calculated normal weekly consumption, which is based on receipt history pre-pandemic. The pandemic consumption is based on the output of the modified HHS model, which is using those SG2 outputs. So that's where you bring in the numbers that we just created and are using them in this new forecasting model. Additionally, we include OptiFlex quantities, which for our system is the on-hand stock at the hospital. And then the great thing about this report is that additional variables can be added later on to account for different scenarios such as substitutes or bulk purchases. Here is an example of looking out across multiple weeks of forecasting. You can see in that top graph there, that without any additional inputs, based only on those primary inputs that we just entered, that we are looking a little bit scary at week 10, saying that we need an additional influx of isolation gowns more than that we currently have. However, by changing inputs, we can provide additional scenarios. So the example on the bottom shows an influx of a substitute at 70,000 gowns. We were working with our operations leaders to determine if lid and reusable gowns would be an option. So at an influx of 10,000 reusable gowns per day, 
times seven days, giving us 70,000 gallons, we now have uh, much more control over our, su our supply inventory and are buying a lot of time that we can grow and continue to meet demand. So in summary, while this model is used to forecast PPE demand, we of course are very hopeful that this is worst case scenario. We are in a position to armor clinical staff preparing for the worst, but hopeful for the best. We are confident that we are prepared for any likely scenario and wish all the best to you and your organization during this time.